Scooter One 2024 is in the books. Toyota, Honda, Mazda, a few others are flying high on the backs of hybrids and gas cars. Meanwhile, Tesla has just posted a loss for the first time in a while. Is this just the beginning of Tesla's decline? Grab your snacks and drinks, buckle in, and we got a long one ahead of us. Over automotive news, GM actually slipped in sales in Q1. We'll talk about a highlight of them though, Buick in a little bit, but Toyota, Honda are racking up double digits. Before we go down the rabbit hole and break this amazing graph down by automotive news and, and then get into individual automakers like Toyota, Honda, et cetera, I want to break down this article from Reuters. Tesla's Q1 numbers have just come in as well, and it is quite alarming. Back in 2022, Tesla was expecting 50% annual growth in auto sales until reaching 20 million in sales. Check out this chart. They wanted to hit 20 million sales in 2030, which is double what Toyota produces uh, in 2023 and 2024. Toyota's about capped out in production. They don't want to overwork their workers. And in fact, over in Japan, since Toyota's profits have been record high, they're rewarding employees at dealerships. There is some consolation for Tesla here, even though their sales were down 9% in quarterly deliveries compared to uh, Q1 2023. They reclaimed the crown for the number one EV seller in the world over from BYD. BYD took it from them in Q4 2023. Tesla retakes it in Q1 2024. That's the silver lining because it's been a 9% decline compared to Q1 2023, and they fell 15% short of what analysts had forecasted. And if we go back to 2023 Q3 for Tesla, they've been overproducing and under delivering, underselling. And we had a big chasm between uh, production and deliveries in Q4 2021 than we've ever seen for Tesla before. So while Tesla is sinking, Check out what's happening to so many other automakers. They're seeing gains in the first part of 2024. BMW up 2.4%. Mini's dragging down their company though, unfortunately. BMW still up even with Mini dragging them down and Rolls-Royce is doing some good things as well. If we look at General Motors, they're down a percentage and a half, not as bad as Tesla, but Buick is the saving grace here. I just drove the Invista amazing vehicle for the price point and i can't recommend buick uh, the invista enough at this point I haven't driven any other buicks recently but that was an amazing bang for your buck sort of vehicle coming around twenty five thousand dollars. and we're seeing drops in cadillac chevy gmc moving on to honda acura down nine percent that is a kick in the pants uh, but i will be driving the zdx that is produced by General Motors alongside of the Cadillac Lyric, which I've heard good things about. So I will be driving that ZDX in just a few weeks from now, so stay tuned for that. But Honda, parent company of Acura, is not seeing those slowdowns. In fact, they're seeing 20% boost compared to Q1 2023. They are crushing it on the backs of hybrids and their CRV and Accord. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit when we pull up individual model sales. Genesis is crushing it. They keep, I think it's something like 15 months of, of, uh, of gains for the luxury brand of Hyundai. Hyundai is pretty much neutral. Kia, they're dragging down the company though, being down two and a half percent. The Rio is not being sold anymore. Uh, that is a big miss. The K5 uh, deliveries have dropped as well. There's other issues going on with Kia, but those are the big ones. Mazda up 13.3% on the year, seeing success of the CX-90 as well. I will be driving the CX-70 uh, in May. So stay tuned for that. Mitsubishi, this is a surprise, up 35%. This is an outlier, definitely, but maybe their plug-in hybrid Outlander, which is the best vehicle in their lineup, in my opinion, is helping their sales. We'll see that, that a little bit when we break them down. Infinity is dragging. The QX80 will be uh, available by the end of the year, the redesigned one with a twin turbo V6. But even though Nissan's up eight and a half percent, we know over 40% of their deliveries are fleet sales. So it's not as good as it seems. Subaru still getting some small increases here up 6%. Lexus up 15%. Toyota 
Just like Honda, up in the double digits here, up 21%, very impressive. Toyota with Lexus up 20%. It's unfortunate that Lexus is seeing such success. Genesis having some success, but Infiniti and Acura right here, minus 9%, and to a lesser extent, Cadillac in the negatives. Even Audi, after having many, many months of consecutive gains, is down 8%. So the luxury market for certain brands is really cooling off. But for Toyota's Lexus division and Hyundai's Genesis division, they are still remaining very strong. And Volkswagen having a very impressive 11% gain. We'll break down their numbers as well at the very end. All right, so the summary is done. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty, guys. We're going to get really nerdy, break down the individual sales of each of those companies that we just talked about. I couldn't find General Motors numbers, but I do have pretty much everyone else's. So let's get into Toyota's highlights here. First quarter sales of electrified vehicles surges 74%, mainly hybrids, guys. Remember the Mirai sells next to nothing and their, their uh, battery electrics don't sell a whole lot either. So it's mainly hybrids, and it represents a 36.6% of total sales volume. So over a third of Toyota's vehicles are now hybridized, and it's only going to increase from there. The Camry that I'm driving next week is fully hybrid with the 2025 uh, model redesign. The RAV4 is expected with its redesign for 2026 to go fully hybrid or fully electrified as well. It's just a beginning. 27 electrified Toyota and Lexus vehicles options available at dealerships, the most among any automaker. All right, get into the spreadsheet here. Toyota cars. The Corolla not only is up 39% on quarter one, they're up 65% for the Corolla in the month of March. Very, very impressive. Supra continues to tank and it's unclear what the future of the Supra is. Um, the GR86 is up 35% on the month and it's about flat on the year so far, but it looks like production volume is increasing there. Mirai, not even to touch on it. The Crown, well, the Crown didn't have full sales volume for the month of March last year. Now it does. And it is ticking right along, up 451% on the year, up 122% on the month. Uh, no surprise there for the Crown. But it will be interested to see the Crown Signia enter the fray as well this summer. The Prius, up 83% on the month. They could easily sell more than this. It's up 138% on the year. So the Prius is actually uh, averaging about 4,400 units per month so far this year. If we multiply that by 12, it's only 53,000. The Prius was selling over 200,000 units in 2012. <laughs> Will they ever come close to that again? The answer is no, because everything else on their, in their lineup has become a, essentially a glorified Prius. I'm driving the Sienna this week for review. On my latest trip to drop the kids off, I got 40 miles per gallon. It's absurd. But yes, the Prius still could stomach to sell probably 100,000 units per year. But they're just still nowhere near uh, that production volume and sales volume. Camry going full hybrid, still crushing it even with the old model. Maybe people are really excited uh, to get the last of the V6 models. Uh, and it's up 21% so far this uh, the for the month of March and it up about 19% on the year. So the Camrys will continue to, to just be crushing it. And I don't expect a big delay or volume reduction between the 2024 and 2025 model year because it's pretty much the same vehicle, different lights, different bumpers, that sort of thing. And improved fifth gen hybrid system. But I don't expect to see a drop there or at least a big one. For the Lexus sedans, the IS is down 6% on the year, but they're surging here in the month of March. RC is actually up about 8% on the year, but look, they're not really selling any of them. It's a travesty. Rest in peace, RC. It's only a matter of time before it's canceled. Lexus ES needs to have a redesign on the coattails of the Camry. Rest in peace, Avalon, which it used to share a lot with in the Kentucky plant, but production of the ES will be going back to Japan within the next year or so is my estimation, but it's, ha it's hanging on there. 
Um, LS is up 18% on the year, up 5% on the month. The volume is still extremely low. LC, the best car in the Lexus lineup, up 21% on the month, up 14% on the year. All right, let's get into Toyota's crossovers. BZ4X up about 12% on the month up 13% on the year. They've sold about 1800 units. If you want to compare that to the Prius, the Prius has sold 13,000 units. RAV4, the cash cow of the Toyota lineup, up 47% on the year so far. They've sold 124,000. Holy cow, guys, 124,000 times four. We could be getting close to the RAV4 selling 500,000 units this year. The pace that they're going. Check this out. Check out the 45% gain in the month of March alone. That is insane. 45,000 times 12. If they can keep this pace up, guys, if they can keep the monthly pace up from March, we'll be seeing 540,000 RAV4s being sold. Absolutely absurd. Corolla Cross up 30% on the month, up 31% on the year. Corolla Cross Hybrid is the only hybrid in its segment, and it and it's just fantastic. Cheap materials on the outside. It doesn't. It's not the best exterior, most handsome vehicle, but that that powertrain in there is hard to pass up. It's kind of like the Sienna. It's not like it's better than the Odyssey, for example. But when you get double the fuel economy. Again, it's hard to uh, just push that aside. All right, Venza, rest in peace, but it is having a great closeout to its last year here in, Mer in America. It will continue on as the Harrier overseas, but it's up 6% on the, the year and up 55% on the month. This is your last chance to get the Venza, which is a essentially a, a Lexus for Toyota prices. I love the Venza. It is fantastic, excellent design and it is great. Anyways, Highlander is getting just destroyed. Why? Because the Grand Highlander is here. So if you add up the volume between Grand Highlander and Highlander, it's 21,000 on the month of March, which is a thousand units behind compared to last March. And if you combine um, the numbers for the year so far, with the Highlander and the Grand Highlander, it's about what, 57,000, which eclipses last year's Highlander sales. So it's, you know, that's no big surprise to me, honestly. So even though it looks like a bloodbath for the Highlander, it's because that production has just shifted uh, for the Grand Highlander. The Forerunner up 70% as people get their last take of the fifth gen here with the v6 and the five speed auto it's up 70 percent on the month up 60 percent on the year toyota knows this that the the people want the last model year of this forerunner and they are just making as many as they can the presses are burning hot with forerunners out of the tahara plant in japan uh, which is great to see sequoia up 36 percent on the month 25 percent sorry 36% on the year, up 25% on the month. Very, very impressive for the large uh, people mover with that. Also gives you off-road capacity. All right, the Sienna, my beloved Sienna, up 53% on the year finally, but it's slowed down. It's only it's about neutral on the month of March. And let's go and check this out. If we push that out, it's monthly sales for the year. It's only at 62,000 sales, which again, I think the Sienna could be selling 100,000 units, but it seems like Toyota would rather make um, the Grand Highlander. And I guarantee the Grand Highlander is a cheaper vehicle for them to produce. The Sienna has the sliding doors. Um, and uh, that's just my guess. My guess is that the Sienna is a more expensive model to produce and they would rather sell more of these Grand Highlanders. There's also talks that the Sienna could be uh, leaving North America and being produced in Japan. And maybe that's why we didn't get a refresh on this 2024 model year when it is a year or two behind the refresh cycle. It's really strange. But yes, yeah, Sienna, there's just a huge pent up demand for it like a lot of other Toyota models. Tacoma down 60% on the year, down 55% on the month. 
They have not got the production up at the two plants, one in uh, Guanajuato and the other one in Baja, the Baja Point plant, um, two different Tacoma plants in Mexico, and they're just nowhere close to producing those vehicles. So I'm sure the dealers are licking their chops since the demand is much higher than the volume. All right, Tundra crushing it up 41% on the month, up 31% on the year. Moving on to Lexus crossovers, the UX down 15% on the year, up, well, down 6% on the month. The UX has switched over to a new hybrid system, um, a better hybrid system that we see actually in the Prius, for example, and the Corolla Cross. Uh, so maybe there's some issues getting that production shifted over to the updated model. Lexus NX up 10% on the year, up 16% on the month. This is great to see. The NX is my favorite NX, or sorry, it's my favorite Lexus crossover, and the GX is my favorite Lexus SUV. It used to be the LX, but the GX is now a better value better value of better buy in every sense of the word, especially the GX 550. Uh, but the GX, it is down 76%. Why? Because they're switching over from the old V8 model to the new F platform model uh, with a twin turbo V6. And so we're just seeing a huge drop here in volume. I hope that's not the case for the forerunner when that gets switched over to the F platform as well. We're seeing that the Tacoma is having issues in the Mexico plant switching over to the new platform as well. It's probably going to be the case for the forerunner after they run out of the fifth generation production. We might see a big drop there. I hope that's not the case though. LX down massively as well on the month, but up on the year. And the TX, the brand new three row crossover that's produced alongside the Highlander and the Grand Highlander, it's sold about 10,000 units so far this year and is about half the volume of the NX. And that's about right. I, I do expect this to be about where it's going to be probably long term, maybe about 40,000 units per year or so. Now for the electrified vehicle breakdown, since Toyota has and Lexus has more electrified models than anywhere anyone else, they have to have a separate spreadsheet to talk about their gains. And I always, the first thing I do when I see this is look at the Prime models. These are some of the most constrained vehicles around for Prime. It's up about 8% on the month, up 40% on the year. Still a huge demand for the RAV4 Prime. What about the Prius Prime? Here it is. Uh, Prius Prime finally getting big volume up about 293% on the year, up 87,000% for the month as they switched over from the previous generation uh, Prime to the new one. The Prime takes up about half of the sales volume, a little less than half, but it's about half the sales volume of the Prius. It's probably due to the fact that they need these prime models in um, carb states or ZEV states like New York, for example, like California and the other states on the West Coast. So they need to have a lot of those plug-in models from the Prius. But isn't that crazy? About half of the Prius models are the prime. It seems like Toyota's prioritizing prime volume instead of overall hybrid volume. All right, let's get into the Corolla Hybrid. Corolla Hybrid outselling the Prius and Prius Prime combined. No problem here. All of them are imported from Japan. It's up 25% on the year, up 80% on the month. The Corolla Hybrid is an absolute slam dunk in terms of long-term ownership, low cost of ownership, I should say. It is super cheap to get your hands on it, assuming you can at no markup, if you can get at sticker price and it gets incredible fuel economy. Not quite as good as the Prius, but it's really, really close. The Camry Hybrid gets about Prius fuel economy here as well, selling uh, about 9,000 units, but this is gonna transform once the 2025 model comes out. Every single Camry sold, if we go back up, is gonna be fully hybridized. They'll be selling 78,000 per quarter, okay? And this will outstrip every other model you see here, including the RAV4 Hybrid, until that goes fully electrified as well. That is going to be a game changer for them in terms of hybrid volume. And I'm really, really excited. You're going from 9,000 Camry hybrids on the market per quarter. And by the end of this year, we'll be seeing about 80,000 Camry hybrids per quarter. 
it is unbelievable that huge drop or huge jump, about a 10 times jump in hybrid volume for the Camry. Mirai, whatever, Crown up 451%. We already talked about the Crown is fully hybrid, so we already talked about that. Sienna fully hybrid as well. We already talked about that. Highlander, well, due to them splitting with the Grand Highlander, it is almost a wash here. Check this out though. Grand Highlander and Highlander hybrid combine. So about 15,000 units between the, between the two, which is down compared to the hybrid of last year's Highlander. So the hybrids for the Highlander have actually dropped, unfortunately. Uh, Sequoia is fully hybrid as well. So we've already covered that BZ4X, whatever. No one's really interested in that. However, if you can find used ones right now, they're super cheap. I found a limited in my area, actually two limiteds under a thousand miles each for $31,000. Very, very affordable for the BZ4X. But I think most people would still rather have Toyota's hybrids than a BZ4X at $30,000. RAV4 hybrid. Holy smokes. Check out this volume. 157% up for the month of March. Up up nearly 200% for year to date. This is massive. I had no idea that they were increasing the RAV4 hybrid volume this much. And this is just a precursor for the RAV4 going fully hybrid maybe a year out from now. The RAV4 Prime, we already mentioned it, it's doing quite well, but I think the volume could be a bit higher. It's about double the volume of the Prius Primes. Venza's fully hybrid, uh, so we, don't need to talk about that. Rest in peace, Venza. The Tundra iForce Max is doing really well, up 72%, up 109% on the month of March. So Tundra Hybrid is seeing some big traction here. Lexus Hybrids, ES Hybrid up 50% so far this year. Very, very impressive. While the rest of the volume there is kind of neutralized, so they're prioritizing ES Hybrids right now. UX, well, it's hybrid only now, but it has dropped overall production as they switch over to the new 300H. NX hybrids up 115% on the month, up 78% on the year. The NX 350H and 450H Plus are home run vehicles. Um, and then here's the prime version, or should I say the plug-in hybrid, the 450H Plus, up 20% on the month, up about 46% on the year. Well, how does that compare to the RAV4 Prime? Because it's the same plug-in hybrid powertrain, 1,400 compared to 7,700. But remember, the RX plug-in hybrid is that same powertrain, and it's sold so far 1,000 units this year. So doing well on the Lexus cam for the plug-in high. Remember the TX has a plug-in as well. Very low volume, guys. Extremely low volume for the V6 plug-in hybrid. It's one of a kind. They only make this for the TX as well as the Crown SUV, sorry, the Century SUV that I detailed for you guys when I was in Japan with David Chow. So the TX plug-in hybrid is like vaporware. It's about 10% of the TX Hybrid's volume. And the TX Hybrid at about 1,500 is about 15% 15 of the total TX volume. So very low hybrid volumes for the TX and even lower for the plug-in hybrid. LS and LC hybrids, they shouldn't even make them um, in my opinion, the twin turbo V6 on the LS is way better. And the five liter V8 is the soul of the LC. When you take that out, you're only getting three sales per month, two sales per month this year, and they've only sold four so far <laughs> for the LC hybrids, the biggest joke ever. But we're gonna move on. If you need a potty break, go ahead and take it. American Honda, we're about 20 minutes or so into the video. I'm gonna take a drink myself. American Honda sales up 12% in March, and it's best first quarter since 2021. Acura, gosh, Acura cars are getting smacked right now. Their trucks are not doing well, meaning their, their crossovers are not doing that great either, but their cars, the TLX, and probably an Integra getting some low volume. We'll look at that here in a little bit. Sales highlights, CRV and Accord post best Q1 hybrid electric sales of all time, no surprise. Civic and Accord sales top 100,000 units in first quarter of 2024. Pilot post strong March sales to gain 21%. Odyssey sales jump 30% over February to over 7,200 units. 
Acura Integra tops 2,500 units with Type S model representing 12% of the sales. RDX post, post best Q1 since 2021. And TLX gets enhanced styling, right? I already gave you guys the new TLX Type S refresh. Pretty good car overall. It's fun to drive. It's a good competitor to the S5 Sportback that I just drove as well. All right, Accord is actually down 5% on the month and down about 2% on the year. Civic though, up 36% on the year, up 45% on the month. That's great to see their volume sedan and hatchback getting that back. CRV up 41% on the year, up 18% on the month. HRV getting huge volume with the, the newest generation up from Mexico, the uh, Celaya plant, I believe down there, up 43% on the year, up 38% of the month. HRV just needs to have that hybrid powertrain from the upcoming Civic hybrid, and it would be giving the uh, Corolla Cross hybrid a good run for its money. But the HRV is doing really, really well for Honda. Um, Odyssey down 10% on the month, down 12% on the year. Passport down 32%. Yikes. They just gave it one last refresh. It's um, um, more like a restructuring of the armrest area, if I remember. There's not a whole lot different with the Passport. Can't wait for the new Passport to come out. Um, maybe by the end of this year, or at least be announced. That would be amazing. But this, this one is just there's nothing special about it and the design is getting super outdated at this point anyways i'm roasting the passport the pilot though is excellent now, now that it's redesigned giving us that nice v6 powertrain with the 10 speed auto the pilot's up 21 percent on the year and the quarter ridgeline down 22 percent interesting so the ridgeline passport and odyssey are all on the old platform the pilots on the new platform there could be some production issues or maybe parts issues with the old large platform or they're getting ready to switch over these models to the new platform that would be amazing i really want to see a new odyssey don't know how new it will be it might just be another refresh but i would love to see an odyssey hybrid to compete against the sienna hybrid ilx down well rest in peace <laughs> integra down 15% on the year and the month. Not sure why. Maybe the initial buyers have bought and uh, they're just not able to move the metal. But the Civic's doing great. Um, NSX, rest in peace. TLX, holy smokes. Down 42% on the month and down 31% on the year. Acura's really struggling right now, guys. MDX, their cash cow, their number one volume seller, is down 27% on the month and the year, okay? It's about 27, 28% down so far. And RDX is the shining beacon right now for Acura, up 43% on the month and 47, 48% on the year so far. RDX doing really well, even though it's getting a little bit long in the tooth at this point. Electrified vehicles for Honda, they don't break it down by model by model, unfortunately, um, but they are down 7% for the month, and but they're up 25% on the year. So not quite as high as Toyota's 74% gain in hybrids, but Honda's still riding the coattails of the success of the CRV and um, Accord hybrid. Moving on to Mazda, let's look at some of the, the highlights here. Best ever sales of the CX-30 with nearly 11,000 sold. Best ever March sales of the CX-50 with 4,600 units. And best ever March of the CX-90 was the first ever March of the CX-90, I believe. So let's go on down to the individual models here. Mazda 3 is back on the map, up 33% on the year. MX-5 Miata, well, maybe they're having some issues with the ND3, the last refresh of the, the ND model, but it's down about 47% on the year. Not good to see for Mazda MX-5 lovers. CX-30 up 40% on the year, up nearly 60% on the month. CX-5, their best selling vehicle, down 13% on the year, down 17% on the month. At least they're making up with some of that drop in volume here with the same segment, CX-50, um, up 16% on the month, up 60% on the year roughly. CX-9, rest in peace. I see them on the road still, and they are gorgeous. Even now, even old, they're still really good looking vehicles. CX-90 here, it's first full month of March ever. 
um, sold nearly 10,000 units, but compared to the CX-9 last year, it's just slightly above the old CX-9 sales volume. Overall Mazda up 10% this year compared to last. There is two more selling days this year compared to last year. So that helped them out. Nissan reports 2024 first quarter sales. Some of the highlights for first quarter and they only post quarterly. Um, Sentra up 78%. That's awesome. People need affordable little cars. Um, the Aria is up 45%. Z is up 44%, but it's super low volume, doesn't really affect them that much. Rogue up 18% year over year. Since they only post quarterly, year to date is gonna be the same as quarterly. So let's just focus on the far right here. Versa up 92%, need cheap cars right now. Sentra up 78%, need cheap cars right now. Ultima's down 13%, Maxima rest in peace. Leaf down 51%, pretty much a rest in peace vehicle as well. The Z up 44% on the year, GT rest in peace well it's it's likely that this could be the last model year of the r35 so that's why i said that very low volume on it um nissan kicks up 16 percent. that's great as we get a new kicks here uh the redesign looks pretty good the frontier up 16 percent. still my favorite mid-size pickup truck uh the titan up two and a half percent rest in peace xterra i wish we had the xterra i made a video on the xterra um, this week. So make sure to check that out. It's likely that it's going to get a rebirth uh, with a third generation. Nissan Pathfinder down 20%, Armada down 45%, Rogue up 18%, Aria up, Murano rest in peace. This generation, they're getting ready for a redesign. We will get a new redesign Murano by the end of this year. Um, and that is a bit of an interesting choice. Hopefully they get rid of the CVT. That would, you know, put the nine speed auto in it from the the pathfinder and the murano is instantly competitive at that point and a hybrid should be coming for the murano but we just don't know when exactly we might be waiting a few years infinity the q50 is up surprisingly sedans aren't doing great with the qx or the q60 it's only a matter of time before they cancel that uh, the QX50 up 10 percent, but the QX50.5 down 20 percent. QX60 down 11 percent. that's the best infinity model right now QX80, I also like the QX80. I'm excited for the, the redesign of that, but that's down 22% as I get ready, ready for the new generation. Um, and overall, Nissan up 7% when you account for Infiniti dragging them down about 12%. Moving on to Mitsubishi, up 36% year over year. Eclipse cross sales more than double in Q1. Mirage and Mirage G4 together up nearly 50% year over year. People need cheap cars and the Mirage is getting canceled next year. So they don't give us percentages, but it's good to see that that Mirage volume, um, Outlander Sport out of wash, that vehicle's old outdated, needs to be updated massively. Outlander doing great. Outlander plug-in hybrid is out of wash right now. Interesting, I thought that would be increased, but they do sit on lots and they are fairly expensive for a Mitsubishi. Uh, so Outlander is just crushing it. Eclipse Cross, volume still pretty low on it, but it's up 50%. Overall, you know, up 37% or so for Mitsubishi, but uh, the latest talks are Mitsubishi and Nissan going to be building a truck together down in Mexico. So uh, a Titan for the North American market would be amazing. And maybe uh, an Xterra version of that truck as a Mitsubishi and bring the Montero back and people would be losing their minds. There would be interest in Mitsubishi with a, a, tri a Triton. I want to say Titan, but that's Nissan. A Triton and a Montero in their lineup for the first time in a long time. Now they don't have any sports cars, but don't forget Mitsubishi is one of the greatest off-road uh, machine producers in the world still to this day. It's just unfortunate we don't get those off-roaders in America anymore. And they've been canceled, like the, the Pajero has been canceled in other markets too. Bring back the Montero Sport, at least in America. Subaru, all-time sales record for the Forester. That's impressive. Q1 sales up 7%. 20 consecutive months of yearly month over month growth and best ever March for the cross track. Subaru just humming along here, uh, except for the Ascent and the BRZ, both of them in the dumps right now. Cross track 
down 7% on the year, but they're up 3.5% on the month, and that's where it took its uh, record, monthly record for the Crosstrek. Forrester, they are just crushing this, and the Forrester is, is my favorite Subaru, I think. I mean, obviously, I love the BRZ for a little coupe, but but the Forester is fantastic. I love the boxy design on it. We have a new Forester coming soon with a hybrid, and I can't wait for that next generation Forester. Up 60% on the year, the best year ever, and it's up 105% on the month. Go Forester. Keep crushing it. And Preza down 25%. Um, you know, the hatchback only model now, uh, it's, it's nothing special. It looks good, and it, it handles great, but... Man, it's a dog. And it doesn't get that good of fuel economy, if I remember right. Uh, Legacy, down 26%. The larger sedan here. I'm surprised it's still on sale here in North America. I wish we had the Legacy Lavorg. That would be fantastic. But it is what it is. Outback, up 2%. Their other sales volume. Typically, the Outback and the Forester have very similar sales. But I think the market and, and Subaru is smart right now. The market really needs more affordable models. And so them focusing on the Crosstrek and the Forester is just reaping massive benefits for them. The Outback is up 7.5% this year, up 2% on the month. Solterra, whatever. No one really wants the Solterra. But I hear you can get better deals on Solterra's brand new than you can the BZ4X because the Subaru dealers on average, are a little bit more compliant with customers. WRX, I saw one this morning with its ugly rear bumper that's like not painted. It was a blue model. But the WRX down 40% on the month and down 42% on the year. Yikes, not looking good. Overall, Subaru up 6.7% on the success of the Forester and the Crosstrek. Everything else is not doing that hot, right? Well, I mean, the, the Outback is, but look, Ascent down, BRZ down, Crosstrek down, Impreza down, Legacy down, Solterra down, WRX down. It's really just this crazy Forester number that's keeping them at a positive. But how long will that last? I don't know. Moving on to Hyundai. Hyundai sets best ever Q1 total sales. Best March ever for Hyundai as well, up 2%. We also have EV sales growth 100% in March. Ionic 5 up 58%. Hyundai has some of the best electric vehicles on the market outside of Tesla. We also have sales records for the Ionic 5 in the in the month of March up 58%, Tucson plug-in hybrid up 62%, and well we just got a refresh on the Tucson. Make sure to watch that video that I uh, broke down alongside of the refreshed Santa Cruz. Tucson hybrid up 48%, so that's great to see those hybrid numbers skyrocket. Uh, to compete with the CRV hybrid as well as the RAV4 hybrid. Palisade up 58%, just crushing it. I think the Telluride hasn't had the same sort of fate, but you got to remember the Palisade is made in Korea and the, the Kia counterpart is made here in the United States. Hyundai EV sales increased 100%. And all eco-friendly vehicle sales combined hit 11,485 units, a 35% increase. Remember, Honda's, I think, was around a 25% increase for their electrified models, and Toyota's was a 74% increase. All right, let's get an individual models here. Elantra, down 17%. The Elantra Hybrid is fantastic, and the Elantra N is fantastic as well. And, and I wonder if this is down because of the, the switch over um, with the refreshed models. Not quite sure. Ionic 5 up 18% on the year, up 58% on the month. Ionic 5, I think, is still one of my favorite, if not my favorite, EV on the market for price to performance. I think it's still there. Ionic 6 doing well. Watch my review on the Ionic 6. If you can accept the looks of it, it is an amazing Model 3 competitor, the volume, and you can get them at crazy lease deals. Actually, the cheapest lease in America right now is Ionic 6. Absolute steal at those prices. Kona, up 29% with the new refresh for the month, up 20% on the year. Fuel cell, Nexo, whatever. Palisade, up 29%. On the year, up 58% on the month. Santa Cruz, probably because they're switching over to the refresh, down about 10%. Santa Fe, also because of the refresh, down about 10% on the year. But the new Santa Fe is a home run. Absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to drive the hybrid variant of it. Um, and maybe one day a new plug-in hybrid. Uh, Sonata, down 9% on the year, but up 7% on the month. Tucson, 
down 1% on the year, down 9% on the month. But again, a refresh is coming, so that could have slowed things up. Venue, we need more cheap cars, and Hyundai's not interested in giving us the cheap little Venue or the cheap little Elantra. So the rest of the vehicles are not cheap anymore. And that's going on with Kia as well. They've killed off the, the Rio, rest in peace Rio. They've only sold 1,800 so far this year when last year they sold 7,000. What are the Kia highlights here? Uh, the Forte Sportage and Telluride each sold over 10,000 units in March. First quarter EV sales up 88% compared to the previous year. And the Sorento SUV increase of 28% year over year in March as 2024 refresh model launches. All right, so they don't give us percentages. It's very typical of Kia. They never do that, unlike Hyundai. Um, but the EV6 is up quite a bit, about 600 units so far this year. Another fantastic EV, but I, I like the Ionic 5 better. It's just a personal preference. Rio, rest in peace, that's killing them. They're down 5,000 units or about 4,500 units compared to last year. And we're missing about 5,000 units here from the Rio alone. So the Rio missing from their lineup is not helping them. Um, and it's dragging down their overall sales. But the Rio probably wasn't that profitable for them either. So that's not the whole picture, I guess. It's just pure volume. Uh, Forte up to account for some of the, the Rio droppage of about 3,000 units so far this year for the Forte as the Forte is getting replaced soon by the K4. And the K4 is getting that amazing hatchback shooting brake wagon looking thing. Um, Unfortunately, without the hybrid, though, and no manual, but that will be coming uh, next year for the K4. The K5's volume is halved. It's halved right now. The Sonata was doing okay. It was only down about 9%, but this is down 50% or so. Poor K5. Stinger, rest in peace. Um, Kia Soul, also not doing that well. We need more cheap cars. I'm not sure what's going on because I like the Kia Soul. Maybe they're reducing the production volume here for some reason. Not quite sure. Nero, kind of like that competitor to the Prius, but I would say it's more of a competitor to the Corolla Cross, actually. Even though the Seltos also competes with the Corolla Cross, there's just no hybrid of the Seltos. And so the Nero takes that. Fortunately, the Nero does not give us all wheel drive in the hybrid form. But the Nero is also a fantastic hybrid vehicle. Can't recommend that enough. Um, but the Seltos is up about 1,000 units on the year. Great to see, you, even though they're down on the month. Sportage up on the month and up on the year. That's their number one seller doing great for them. Sorento up about 2000 units on the year with the refresh coming. Um, and the Telluride down 2000 units on or about 1500 units on the year, but still huge volume here. And the Carnival, we need more minivans on the market. We see that um, the Sienna is not cutting it in terms of saturating um, that hybrid minivan market, but the Carnival is coming with a refresh and a hybrid powertrain this year. Finally, thank you. Now it's front wheel drive only. That's fine in my opinion. I cannot wait to see this Carnival hybrid and drive it and test it for you guys. Actually, I still haven't driven a Carnival. Kia has not supplied one to me even after asking them. So Kia, I know you're not listening about 40 minutes into this video, but I would love to see a Carnival hybrid in my driveway this year to compare it to the Sienna hybrid. Overall, Kia down about 5,000 units, like I said. Volkswagen, they're up about 10%, right? Volkswagen sales increased 21% year over year. But what's dragging them down is Audi. Audi sales were down, right? So that's pushing them down. But Volkswagen's crushing it right now. On the backs of the Atlas and the Atlas Cross Sport, they provide an amazing vehicle for your money. You can get them for super good bargain. The Atlas and Atlas Cross Sport now have like standard ventilated seats, like really good deals. They drive great. They've like the build quality on them is pretty good as well. I really like the Atlas. It is a great value vehicle for families and the bang for, and they look cool too. They're not amazing, but they look nice and macho. Anyways, I, I'm a big fan of the Atlas and the Cross Sport. The Taos, down 12%. Yikes, we need more cheap vehicles. Tiguan, long wheelbase. It's the only Tiguan that's sold here in the States, up 10%. Um, ID4, down 37%. We knew Tesla was getting crushed with the, the EV drop in demand, and the ID4 
is also seeing that. But remember, we talked about Hyundai's EVs and Kia's EVs doubled up, up 88% or so for Kia and up 100% for Hyundai's EVs. So what's going on? Hyundai's EVs are better. The ID4 was one of the least impressive EVs I've tested on the channel. I know it's been updated since then. The Hyundai eGMP EVs and even their Kona EV are way better EVs than the ID4, in my opinion. Look at that. Why is the Jetta up 185%? Riddle me that, guys. I don't understand that. Arteon, I can't believe that's still on sale. Uh, the GTI also up 156% and the Golf R up 125%. So we saw the WRX suffering in sales. Maybe those WRX buyers are going to the GTI and the Golf R. I wouldn't blame them. Um, they are more fun to drive. That's for freaking sure. Very interesting. So well done GTI and Golf R and Atlas and Jetta. And that's impressive. You know, I want Volkswagen to do well here in the United States. More competition is a good thing. I want Tesla to do well here in the United States, but the EV market's not supporting them right now like it has in the past. So I'm going to end it there, guys. It is getting hot and sweaty in this room after breaking down all these sales numbers. What's the most impressive for you as we go back to automotive news? Is it Honda and Toyota? Volkswagen up 21%? That's one of the surprises for me. And they don't really have any hybrids, but their gas cars are really good. Mazda up 13%. The, the Koreans is kind of cruising along at, at uh, high levels as well. Uh, General Motors was a surprise for me. I know I don't have individual model breakdowns for them, but General Motors down really, but Buick saving their butts right now. So go Buick and I got to shut it down there. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next quarterly update. This was a long one and make sure you subscribe for more sales breakdowns in the future. Thank you and have a great day. Peace.